Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell the truth about silver. Today is Saturday, the 4th of September, 2021. And we're publishing our Gold and Silver weekly update for the week ending the 3rd of September. And yesterday, we saw gold prices rise quite dramatically and silver prices surge after the non-farm payroll report. So let's take a look. Gold rose $10 last week, rising from 1818 to 1828 having hit a high of 1,834 and a low of 1,802, a rise of half a percent, but holding steady and confidently so far above the $1,800 level. In sterling terms, gold finished the week at £1,319, that's down £2, and in euros it closed at €1,539, that's down €2. Euros. Silver rose 71 cents, rising from 2403 to 2474, having hit a high of 2489 and a low of 2377, a rise of 3% following the previous week's rise of 4.25%. But we have to bear in mind it has of late had a dramatic drop. In sterling terms, silver closed at 17 pounds and 85 pence. That's up 36 pence. And in euros, it closed at 20.82 euros, and that's up 0.42 euros. The gold to silver ratio fell again from 75.6 to 1 to 73.9 to 1. And it seems for now to be comfortable in that sort of 70 to 75 to 1 bracket, in spite of Pampers saying it's going to 16 anytime soon. Bitcoin is up $1,303 and stands now above $50,000 at $50,290 with forecasters predicting it's going to 52, fall back to 47 and then rise to all-time highs of $64,000. We shall see if that happens. Going to the equity markets, the Dow Jones closed on Friday at 35,369, down 74 points on the day and down 86 points on the week. The S&P 500 closed at 4,535, down two points on the day, but up 26 points on the week. And the Nasdaq Composite closed at 15,363, up 32 points on the day and up 234 points on the week. There's no stopping the Nasdaq. Oil prices, Brent crude closed at 72.61, that's down 9 cents, and WTI crude closed at 69.29, and that's up 55 cents on the week. Now both gravitating at this $70 level. The dollar index stands at 92.03, bearing in mind that during the course of the week, and the, certainly the previous week, it was over 93, and therefore it is now at 92.03 down 0.65 on the week, which follows the previous week's fall of 0.81. Now we concluded last week's video with the following forecast. Quote, so next week we expect to see gold trading between 1750 and 1875 with 1700 to 1900 as outliers and we can see silver trading between 23 and 25 with 2210 and 2580 as outliers. Both gold and silver, in spite of those sharp moves yesterday, traded perfectly well within the base range that we forecasted. But equally, once again, gold has traded within a relatively tight range of $32, similar to last week's tight range of 33 The major move, exactly as we forecasted and predicted, was on Friday after the announcement of the non-farm payroll report. We made it very clear last week, the week before, and during the course of the week that's just passed, that any derivation from expectations of the non-farm payroll will have a significant impact on gold and silver prices one way or the other. And we saw that on the announcement, gold rose from 1815 to 1834 in one jump and then fell back just slightly to 1828. 
Silver, up until Friday, traded within a range of just 49 cents. It was an incredibly small range because, once again, like gold, it was waiting for Friday's non-farm payrolls. And when it was announced, we saw silver rise perpendicularly from 24.10 to 24.89, falling back slightly to close at 24.74, thereby providing us with our typical just over a dollar trading range for silver, in fact at $1.12 between highs and lows. Now each morning we produce daily updates expressing the reasons for the various price movements and important economic data being announced. And so we do wholeheartedly suggest that you tune into these. There are, they are generally between 10 and 12 minutes long. We try to keep it as short as we can, but provide you with as much information as possible. Now these non-farm payrolls are important because they may very well set the trend for prices until the next Fed FOMC meeting, which is due on the 21st and 22nd of September. And it is this data on which the Fed is likely to base its decision on its bond buying tapering and the future for interest rates, though we all accept that any interest rate changes are a couple of years away. So, I've mentioned non-farm payroll figures a number of times. Well, what were they? Well, in July we saw an upsurge of 1.05 million jobs. Huge increase. And although expectations for August were going to be lower, coming in at 720,000 new jobs, the actual figures came in at 235,000. A third of expectations. So this seriously suggests that the aim for full employment or maximum employment is still a long time away. And as this is one of the two key targets for the Fed, this means we're not likely to have any tapering in September or October and quite possibly, possibly, not for the rest of the year. This, of course, hit the dollar and has acted as a significant tailwind for gold and for the moment silver prices, which were lagging gold in percentage terms in recent weeks. In addition, on Friday, we had the market services PMI coming in at 55.1, some 0.2 below expectations, and the ISM services index coming in at 61.7, 0.1% below expectations in themselves not enough to move markets but again suggesting that the economy is not growing as fast as expectations. It was without doubt and we've cautioned all week that the non-farm payrolls would move markets and so it has. So from a technical point of view we have for gold resistance at the July highs of 1831 and support at the 10-day moving average of 1808. Now we've already seen that gold is currently at 1828 and has exceeded the 1831 level but fell back and it has to overcome this hurdle before 1900 could potentially be on the charts. But we cannot ignore that as a possibility. There is support at 1808 and the short and medium term momentum has turned positive and the MACD is suggesting a buy signal for gold. Slightly different for silver though, not much but slightly. Silver is also testing July highs and we have resistance at the 50 day moving average of 2478 and support at the 10 day moving average of 2398. The fast stochastic though is suggesting that we're in an overbought position and is pointing to a sell-off. Though the MACD is suggesting a buy signal, so we do have some conflict between these two indices. Now economic data announced last week we covered in the daily videos and they broadly revealed lower consumer confidence index manufacturing and services PMIs against expectations and productivity figures and jobs also lower than expectations. Now this coming week we've have the following economic reports coming out of the United States. Monday is a Labor Day holiday, so nothing scheduled. Nothing scheduled for Tuesday. Wednesday, we have the job openings for July in the Beige Book. Thursday, weekly jobless claims. And Friday, producer price index for August. That's it. That's all we have. Perhaps one of the least weeks for announcements we've ever seen. 
other than perhaps Christmas week when most markets are closed, or for part of it at least. So we're unlikely to get any market reaction from this data other than possibly some form of confirmation on the weekly jobless claims due on Thursday. On the political front, it's Afghanistan and the spread of the COVID Delta variant, now with over 150,000 infections a day in the United States, and it's spreading quite significantly throughout the rest of the world. So where do we see gold and silver prices moving next week? Well, again, we're caught between whether we're going to see more hospitalizations due to the Delta variant and further restrictions in trade as a result, and perhaps more pertinent in terms of effect whether the dollar will continue to fall after yesterday's announcement or stage some form of recovery, though at this moment it's difficult to see why it should. Certainly very short term, and we're talking days, not weeks. So next week we do expect to see gold trading at the lowest level potentially at 1775, though we suspect it's going to remain above $1,800, and at the higher end 1900, with 1750 and 1950 as outliers. We can see silver trading between 2350 and 2550, with 23 and 2625 as outliers. What do you think? Do share your thoughts. Thank you so much for listening. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel, press the bell sign, and hopefully give us a thumbs up. We've listed below some of the important videos we've produced in recent weeks, and those links can be accessed immediately if you just read through the description. Thank you once again. We're going to produce further videos this weekend, and we might even produce one specifically on the jobs report yesterday. Until next time, have a great, safe weekend and prosperous week ahead. Illuminati silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners. Thank you.